Well, ladies and gentlemen, can you hear me now? Maybe you can hear me now? Well, I hope that you can because Okay, I see that you can hear me, yes? Oh, it's nice, great. So then we can continue. Phew, <laughs> sorry for that. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as you can uh, see on, on this website, translation in any fields is really important, and technical translation as well. I hope you are enjoying this funny translation that um, uh, there are uh, certain... Uh, uh, works of art exhibited in Moscow. Uh, these were executed over the past two years. Of course, this is not the example, um, any uh, an example of inversion in the text, but it illustrates uh, really nicely the way translation may change the meaning. And sometimes it may change the meaning in a funny way, sometimes it may change the meaning in a crucial way for the adequacy of translation. And uh, in technical translation, this is really important to observe the inversion, to understand the message, and to render the idea, uh, well, correctly. Yeah. Well, if you look at the next slide, you will see a sentence which reads in English, I gave up the idea. Uh, I gave up the idea, of course, the meaning is clear. It could be translated as, Ya podal idea. But some inexperienced translators may render this expression, and I had such examples that some of my students, they have rendered the sentence in the way of Ya podal, Ya выступил с этой идеей. So instead of Ya отказался от этой идеей, the translation was Ya podal идеей. The um, translation uh, may be provoked by uh, the association with the phrase I came up with the idea. So up uh, has the association of certain action, right? But the article here and the post positive up, they are meaningful for the general idea of the sentence. And uh, of course, not to be mistaken, you have to consider the grammatical aspect of the text of the sentence, the grammatical aspect of uh, your target idea. Yeah? And this is what our course is about. We will deal with the grammatical aspect uh, of translation, of technical translation. So, what we're going to do today? Today we're going to have a lot of practice. I will explain to you the concept of inversion, types of inversion, and the way it functions in the text. And also, I would ask you to practice a lot with translation. Every, sen uh, every sentence that I would challenge you to translate, could you please translate in the chat, okay? I will try to monitor and see all your translations. Of course, I will not be able to comment on all of the variants, but we can discuss some options, and I think this would be really productive, okay? So, uh, if we look at the scheme on the next slide, we will see the, uh, this is actually a really nice scheme and I didn't have time to translate it into English, but I think you will agree with me that this scheme illustrates greatly the word order in the English text. And uh, this scheme shows that the position of each part of speech. We see that mm, the adverbal modifier may have a postposition or preposition to the principal parts of the sentences. Uh, the subject, predicate, and uh, the object are the universal, uh, at least the subject and the object, they're universal in a sentence, and uh, the attribute may take any position. So, what is challenging is to understand uh, which word actually uh, represents what part of speech. If you look at the sentence below, these function as agents, you will see that uh, function uh, apart from uh, the fact that we all know uh, this noun here is represented as a verb and these the uh, this pronoun functions as the subject 
And of course, we should translate the sentence as uh, данные виды, либо данные элементы функционируют как агенты. Right? Depending, of course, on the uh, topic, on the uh, field uh, of the uh, of the subject, the field that we are translating, depending on whether it's chemistry or uh, whether it's um, maybe medical translation or uh, oil and gas or whatever. So let's turn to a bit of practice. Uh, here, uh, the so to say, the prelude, the preface to the topic of uh, inversion will be the topic of uh, parts of speech and understanding which function the parts of speech can have. So on this slide, you see one and the same word, matter, which functions as different parts of speech. So the first challenge will be for you to translate these three sentences. And while you are doing this, please write your trans type your translations um, in, uh, in our chat. I will uh, see them. And... Uh, uh, here we need to look at these statements and uh, uh, first of all realize which part of speech the word matter represents. Yeah, so I'll be waiting for uh, your translation here. Could you please type it? So at the uh, Definitely, I will try to analyze the first translation, maybe some of the following. But so far, uh, when you start working with uh, uh, any texts, uh, with any technical material, the first thing you need to do is, of course, you need to understand which field this uh, material comes from. So, if you look at the first sentence, probably it could be... Uh, uh, it could be referred to uh, IT technologies, right? Number two is quite universal. It may belong to any field of the language, right? As well as the third one. So I have uh, the first answers. Design of automatic цифровых computers, непростая задача. Yeah, very nice way, непростая задача, right? Непростая вещь, we have. The second one. Эти коэффициенты не имели значения. Эти коэффициенты не важны. Yeah. So, again, please pay attention to the tense, right? Did not matter. I think не имели значения would be more exact, right? And then is not a simple matter. Matter is quite a technical term, isn't it? So I think вещь may not attribute that good. Probably we better turn to... Uh, непростая задача, yes. And the third one we have the versions. Неважно, как долго мы будем работать, мы выполним работу, yeah. Then uh, мы, в общем, можем выполнить эту работу вне зависимости от того, как много времени это займет. Very nice. Then we have another comment. Мы вполне можем выполнить эту работу вне зависимости от того, как долго. Мы работаем, возможно, будем работать, да? Again, сбор автоматических цифровых компьютеров – это непросто. Сбор, ну, uh, I think design is probably more about проектирование или разработка, right? Этими коэффициентами можно пренебречь. Very nice, very nice version. Yeah, very nice option. So, uh, if you want, please keep. Uh, typing your translations in the chat. I will be looking at them from time to time. But so far we can continue and turn to some provocative uh, vocabulary units that may confuse a translator because they may function firstly as different parts of speech or secondly they may have such a form that may be a bit confusing or misleading for a translator. So. I challenge you to translate backwards, okay? Please look at the two words, a mean or a means, right? So what I need you to do is to translate these four sentences, but the italized phrases should contain the word mean or a means, okay? 
So this is another challenge and while you are typing your translation I will get back to the previous translated sentences, analyze them and comment, okay? So I have another translation. Проектирование автоматических цифровых компьютеров – это непросто. Mm -hmm. Опять-таки, непростая задача. I, I like it better. Well, personally, этими коэффициентами можно пренебречь. I have discussed it already. Возможно, мы можем выполнить эту работу вне зависимости от того, как долго она займет. Yeah, I, I think it's quite nice, but как долго could be uh, substituted by вне uh, зависимости от того, сколько времени, сколько временного ресурса она займет. Right? Мы определенно можем выполнить эту работу, несмотря на длительность процесса. I think it's nice. Why not? Эти коэффициенты незначительны. It's quite good. Неважно, как долго, но мы сможем выполнить эту работу. Well, that sounds a little bit not so technical, not so formal, but anyway, well, I'm very happy to see that all of you managed to render the big idea. This is really nice. As for the stylistic components, please pay attention. Then uh, we have... Um, the issue, oh, we, ha we have the new block, it's nice. So, the first translator, Leo from Russia, it's really nice, you're working really fast, it's good to see. So, the issue of the precise definition of a system is by no means an easy one. Yeah, great, ни в коем случае, by no means. Awesome. Разработка цифровых ЭВМ, это непростая задача, that's the previous block. Эти коэффициенты не имели значения. Uh -huh. Возможно, нам удастся сделать работу вне зависимости от ее длительности. Yes, really nice, really good. So, the next translator, Shade Lanterns. The problem of defining the systems is, is not an easy task by no means. So, please be careful here because you have double negation in the same sentence. You have not an easy matter by no means. That, that would not probably do in terms of grammar, okay? The problem of accurate determination of a system is by no means simple or easy, yes. The problem of the exact defining of the system is by no means a, the easy one, but I think the article here should be the indefinite and easy one, right? So, actually the time limit is over for the translation challenge. I need you to listen to the variants that I can offer to translate these sentences, okay? Um, so far we have a version, uh, this means the simplification of a system, right? Yeah, the third one. So as for the second and the fourth sentence, I see that they were the most challenging for you, yeah? So, проблема точного определения системы ни в коем случае не является простой. That was not a trouble and I'm happy to see that you know the phrase is by no means a simple one or easy one. Then, обязательно, this is the opposite phrase to by no means, this is by all means, right? Then, под этим подразумевается, well, as probably you already know, passive voice is very frequently used. It, it is favored in technical translation, so that's why I would render this is meant by, by, by the passive voice uh, means, right? And средняя величина, this is the mean, Yes, the mean, and unfortunately nobody came to the translation of the final sentence, but I hope you will consider this. So, first thing that we need to remember before we turn to the challenge of translate, translation of inverted texts is that first we need to identify the part of speech, because this trouble, this challenge, makes the process of inverted sentences translation even more challenging. So we have to understand what part of speech the word refers to. And you will get some sentences for translation as your home assignment uh, with this challenge, where you have to understand whether this or that word is a noun or a verb or an adjective or whatever. So, uh, once again, we have to pay attention first to the articles, to the prepositions and to the parts of speech that the word takes, okay? So, and uh, uh, final, I would say, example that we can deal with uh, would be the word subject or subject, as you probably know. This is a really popular word in technical texts 
and you can see some extracts from technical texts where we have the uh, the word subject uh, in in some of, of uh, its grammatical forms whether it's uh, when it's repre it represents a noun or a verb or even an adjective so if you look at the first sentence estimates subject to variations should be carefully analyzed here you see that subject well firstly estimates Estimates are gonna be the subject. These are the plural, uh, the plural form of the noun, right? Estimates. Subject, that would be the adjective, right? Расчеты подвержены вариациям должны быть тщательным образом проанализированы, right? So subject to is a very popular phrase, and I would like you to be armed with it and use it as much as you can. Uh, the value is subject to constraints imposed. The same structure, right? Данное значение подвержено налагаемым ограничениям. The sample was subjected to intense heating. So you see here, subject is a verb. Basically, the meaning does not change dramatically, but anyway, образец был подвергнут интенсивному нагреванию. Well, uh, here, he, here are just the translations that I have voiced. Probably my improvisations were not so good as the ones given here because these ones were given much more thought. And uh, again, underlining the key issues to look at, we need to, first of all, uh, figure out what functions as the subject, what functions as the predicate, to understand the inversion properly. And, uh, okay, this is the continuation, but I think we can skip it, and uh, I just give you a look of uh, some... Um, sentences that you would be uh, provided as your home translation. I will uh, send you these sentences and you can find them just below the streaming. I will post them as a comment afterwards and I will send you uh, directly. Uh, th these are the parts of your translation. So here you will need to figure out what uh, these words, the italized words, function as. Uh, the subject, predicate or whatsoever and translate respectively. So, now we are ready to turn to the topic of inversion. And uh, we've got three reasons to make the text inverted. The first reason is that we have to make questions. You know that inversion is the natural one and simple and common when it deals with the questions. Because here we change the position of the auxiliary verbs uh, and uh, basically this is it, right? Inversion is very commonly used for emphasis. Here, there may be a kind of uh, complication, I would say, or uh, kind of incomprehensibility, yes, for, for Russian le learners of English, because uh, Russian technical texts are as unemotional as possible. As for the English technical texts, they can be quite emotional and they can require em emphatic structures, emphasis. And for these reasons, inversion is very frequently used. And as for the rhythm, inversion is very much used for the uh, purposes of retaining proper rhythmical structure. And we will see the way it operates. For example, if we look at this sentence, this mistake we observed in all his articles. We see that this mistake uh, is the object, right? And the object should follow the predicate. We would naturally say we observed this mistake in all his articles. But for the sake of emphasis or rhythmical organization, we have to render it in the way именно эту ошибку мы наблюдали во всех его статьях. So then we just invert the object before the subject. So, inversion may be of two types. The first type is just simple inversion. That's when we change the positions of uh, predicate or object. For example, we can look at the statement um, in the vacuum was a new sample. В вакууме находился новый образец. In this, uh, this sentence may seem a bit clumsy because 
uh, you would say that the word there is missing because we need the structure of the is the ra, right? But uh, no, this is just the exa an example of inversion and we see that it can be easily rendered in this way. In the vacuum was a new sample. Uh, as for the double inversion, here we have uh, a bit more of transformations. Well, the first transformation is that the predicative is put to the front position in a sentence. And in this case, the predicative, именная часть составного сказуемого, right? The one that follows the link verb normally. And uh, the predicative may be expressed by participle first or second, adjective, noun with the preposition. So the predicative is put before, well, in, in, the, in the beginning of the sentence, right? And uh, the linking verb or the auxiliary verb is positioned after adverbal modifier and after the sub well and the subject after the verb to be. Yes? This type of inversion should be translated with adverbal modifier. And uh, we have to translate the predicate together. That's unite the linking verb and the predicative. So that may sound a little bit complex, but you can look at the examples and see what I mean. Yeah? Important for this method is temperature. Для этого метода важным фактором является температура. So we see that we've got here uh, the reunion of the pre predicate, right? Remaining to be discussed is the main problem. Теперь остается обсудить основную проблему. Остается обсудить, this is the reunited predicate. Included in table 7 are dioxygen co complexes. Or of great importance in this case is the starting material. So, for this kind of inversion, there may be not so, so many problems of identification and dealing with this and uh, translation of this type of inversion. But let, let's look at the following examples. Well, oh, I'm sorry, we have to get back a little bit. Another type of phrase of inversion would be it is, then some block of information, that which we want. For example, it is this last category that is of interest to us. It was not until 1970s that he published the book. It was he who informed us about the results of their work. Could you please pick any sentence of these three? Any that you like, or maybe the, it's best to find the one that may challenge you most and translate in the chat. So, please check that you can do it really fast. Just one sentence, but I want everybody to translate, okay? Could, could please everybody uh, just type your translation in the chat for me to see that you are alive, guys, okay? <laughs> All right, I'll be waiting. Well, I would personally choose the first one <laughs> because I think that sounds more technical, but why not? The second and the third, they also look okay. All right, Lara, you're the first. That's great. Нас интересует только эта последняя категория. Mm-hmm. Well done. Yes. Awesome. Именно он сообщил нам о результатах uh, их работы. Great. Super. Нам интересна именно последняя категория. Именно он проинформировал нас о результатах их работы. Great. Come on, guys. Technical translators, they have to translate really fast. Please, everybody, type something. Именно он сообщил нам о результатах работы. Right. Он опубликовал эту книгу впервые только в 1970-м. Good, good choice, right? Лишь в 1970-м. Mm -hmm. Именно он проинформировал нас. Он смог опубликовать свою книгу только в 70-м. Mm -hmm. Насчет смог, I'm not sure. Нас интересует только последняя категория. Mm -hmm. Лишь в 70-м публиковал свою книгу. Yes. Мы заинтересованы только в последней категории. Это он сообщил нас нам mm -hmm. о результатах работы. Right. So I see all of this. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would like to draw attention to the translation. До 1970-го он не публиковал свою книгу. Probably this would be too much of translation loan, okay? I would say that он опубликовал свою книгу только в 1970-м. 
Yes. Well, не ранее 70-го, maybe, but I think, uh, again, that does not sound very natural in, in, uh, in Russian. Yeah? Он не публиковался до 70-го года. Well, you see, this is different, because uh, if you say он не публиковался до 70-го, it means that he didn't publish any books. But we see that we, we don't know this information. Yeah? We know only about this particular book, his book. That's why it would probably not be an adequate translation. So just a bit tip, uh, when you translate something, uh, let, let it rest a bit and then show it to anybody who does not speak English. Because the people would see some phrasing, some uh, cliches which are not natural for Russian. They will indicate them to you. So this is a really nice trick. Okay. So... Uh, These are the versions that I can offer. Именно эта последняя категория представляет для нас интерес. И только в 70-м он опубликовал свою книгу. Это он сообщил нам о результатах их работы. Yes. So, and uh, uh, sometimes you can get extra wording into this statement. It is that. Yeah? So you can have a, set, set, uh, a word precisely, which is very frequently used in technical texts. It is precisely this method that he followed. Как раз этот метод он использовал. It was not only this value that counted. Не только эта величина имела значение. It was Professor N who was elected chairman of the session. Председателем собрания был избран Professor N. So please pay attention to the final statement. That renders to the rhythmical, natural rhythmical structures of uh, English and Russian. If we say that, uh, if we speak about English, normally the beginning of the sentence bears the ream, the most important and new information, right? Whereas for Russian, for the Russian sentences, uh, the ream comes in the end of the sentence. That's why just the organization of the statements into what comes first, what comes last in the sentence may help you in dealing with inversion. So, the auxiliary verb do may help the inversion. I'm sure you have seen the statements and I, I hope you're using them in speech hundred times a lot. For example, the value does seem high in the light of this observation. Это значение действительно кажется высоким. It did cause some difficulties. Это все же вызвало некоторые трудности. Um, I believe you know that this auxiliary functions as an emphatic inverted structure only in present simple and past simple. Yeah, I believe you know that. And please feel free to use them in your translations and in your speech. Um, next translation challenge. Next translation challenge. We have uh, uh, three sentences, which uh, I would ask you to translate. As you can see, they are not inverted, not inverted, but they, they contain some challenge within themselves, which I would ask you to look at and cope with. So, again, uh, please challenge yourself, test yourself, your translation really quickly in the chat, all of the three sentences, okay? And again, I would ask you to participate, I mean, to participate everybody here. Could you please uh, type the translation of all these three sentences? Because sometimes you may not catch the meaning. I want to see if you are able to catch the meaning, okay? Please, everybody, type your translation of these three sentences as quick as possible. Fast technical translation, all right? Let's do it. I can read them for you if, if it helps. These transitions of electrons may occur provided that sufficient energy is available. Now the system recovers from a fault given a fault occurs. The pipe is similar to the one being used, save it is a bit wider. I do, I, I, I do believe that my reading helped you because here the pulsation, the intonation may help a lot, may contribute to understanding. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe you can translate them. Just catch the meaning and render. So I see the first translators. 
Данные перехода электронов могут происходить только при наличии достаточного количества энергии. So provided here is the synonym for if, right? Then, эти переходы электронов могут возникать только лишь при достаточном уровне энергии. Uh -huh. Подобные переходы электронов можно наблюдать при наличии достаточного количества энергии. Данные призов... ну, преобразования перехода обычно, да, могут происходить при условии наличия достаточной энергии. So, guys, let's turn to the second sentence. Second sentence with the electrons, I think it's quite okay. Okay, Camila, good. Эта трубка похожа на ранее использованную, но она намного шире. Um, not exactly. Well, as for the electrons, everybody got the idea. I need the second and the first. Эта трубка похожа на ту, что использовали ранее, кроме того, что она чуть-чуть шире. Mm -hmm. Переходы, переходы, it's correct. Uh -huh. Теперь система восстанавливается от аварии, если такое произойдет. Uh -huh. Almost there. Данные переходы электроны могут происходить только при условии наличия достаточной энергии. Эта труба похожа на ту, что была использована до этого, но она немного шире. So, here, ladies and gentlemen, we have the um, two challenges in the second and in the third statements. Please keep typing your translations. It's important for me to see. So, uh, the first italized word is given. Now the system recovers from a fault. Given a fault occurs. Given uh, is also a synonym for if, yeah, under condition of something. So then, и тогда система восстанавливается от ошибки или от краха, да, ошибки при условии, что ошибка имела место или имеет место. So now here may not always mean the, the present continuous, so to say. Yeah? Or, uh, труба, трубка, похожа на используемую, однако она несколько шире. Yes. So, save here uh, stipulates some opposing idea, right? So, from these challenges, we see that for translation of, for the translation of inverted text, we don't only have the challenge of uh, the part of speech identification, but we, we may also have the challenge of certain uh, conjunctions that we may not know. But basically, I'm sure that these are, uh, these are the most challenging, yes? Please, if you haven't seen uh, these structures before, take a note of them, yeah? Given and safe may function as conjunctions. Если случается ошибка, тогда система восстанавливается после него. Yes, good idea. В случае восстановления сбоя, система восстанавливается сама. Yes, mm -hmm. why not? Good solution. В случае возникновения сбоя, yeah, система восстанавливается сама. Yeah. Right. So, uh, при условии, если ошибка имеет место, и за исключением того, что она намного шире, like I said, yeah? You can see uh, the translations uh, provided by professional translators, technical translators. And uh, uh, concessive clauses, уступительные предложения, uh, also require inversion. Normally, we have the structure of predicative, uh, invert, inverted predicatives, and using though or as uh, in the post position. So, here we have... And the translated recommendations are to use the structures хотя or как ни. For example, difficult though it may be, the problem will be formulated. Хотя могло быть и трудно, но задача... Хотя это могло быть и трудно, задача будет сформулирована. Или как не трудна эта задача, она будет сформулирована. Hard as it is, we must do the work. Хотя эта работа и трудна, мы должны ее сделать. Или как не трудна эта работа, мы должны ее сделать. Yes. Uh, also, inversion may be found in the structures which start with only, never, rarely, nowhere, not only, but, hardly, when, or neither, and nor. Yeah? For example, never in this case will temperature remain constant. 
not only did the current stop but they did not present any information nor did they provide financial help so here let's uh, just to speed up a little our um, webinar I would ask you to try and translate the sentences for yourself you may not type but if you want for, if you want me to look at your translations please type them in the chat uh, translate the sentences and then I will show you the uh, some variants of translation of the sentences so you can test yourself whether you did it right way or probably something could be polished okay so let's start with the first one never in this case will temperature remain constant second one not only did the current stop but they did not present any information nor did they provide financial help. Mm -hmm. В таких случаях температура всегда меняется. Yes, good solution. В подобных условиях температура никогда не остается постоянной. В этом случае температура никогда не остается постоянной. Yes, great. Okay. The fourth one, we could not identify the sample, neither could we make the experiment once more. Mm -hmm. Only in special cases do the wares reinforce one another. Yeah, yeah, good. I'm following your chat. I like all these versions. You got the message. Mm -hmm. Температура никогда не меняется при таких условиях. So, as for the rest of the sentences, try to translate them just for yourself. Yeah, by saying the sentences in Russian, because typing may take some time. And then I will change the slides, and you will be able to compare your translation to the one I offer. Okay? Мы не смогли идентифицировать образец. Повторить эксперимент нам тоже не удалось. Yes, good one. Они не предоставили ни информации, ни финансовой помощи. Yeah, you can unite these two sentences, but if you preserve the structure, uh, what, what will be the, the way it sounds in Russian? Then, они не предоставили никакой информации, они также не оказали финансовую помощь. Yes. Okay, let's see the way it may sound in Russian. So, if we have the inversion of never to the front position, we can retain it easily in Russian because this would be also emphatic. Никогда в этом случае температура не будет оставаться постоянной. Then, не только прекратился ток, но и. Они не предоставили никакой информации, не обеспечили они финансовую помощь. Мы не смогли определить или охарактеризовать образец, а также мы не смогли провести эксперимент еще раз. So, as for this structure, neither nor, the recommendation is uh, to, to, to duplicate uh, the predicate because in technical text uh, some sentences may be too sophisticated and too complicated in structure and it's good to duplicate them. Only in special cases do the wares reinforce... Oh, it should be waves. I'm sorry, I kept thinking what wares are. Только в особых случаях волны усиливают друг друга. Right. Sorry for the misprint. And uh, um, the home assignment that you will get. I will repeat the home assignment in our chats. Yes. You will get uh, some sentences for translation. And for the sentences, you need to spare maximum 30 minutes. And you can look up dictionaries only three times, okay? So, please follow the rules of this challenge because the sentences do not have specific terminology that you may not get from the context, okay? So, these sentences I will send to you and you can uh, pause the video here and get them from here if you don't want to take them from anywhere. But the challenge is 30 minutes, okay? The second assignment as a home translation would be 
20 minute challenge only 20 minutes no more okay but this is a concise text the concise text with a lot of issues that's real text with a lot of issues of inversion uh, terminological mix-ups like whether it's a noun or an adjective or a verb and you need to identify that some complex structure with uh, unusual uncommon conjunctions so and um, this will be up to you but the time limit is only 20 minutes and uh, uh, what 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 I should tell you about technical translation that may help you for your homework or that may help you in your work of the technical translator in general so let's talk just briefly five minutes about machine translation um, I know that uh, when I send you the material for translation uh, and you don't have a picture or something that I printed on a sheet of paper for you but you have it in uh, electronic version in text format so to say I, I know that you attempted to use the Google Translate and I've done that with the text about material research I uploaded this to Google Translate and I'm okay with you doing that but I need to warn you that just by mere looking first looking through first sight on the text I found four mistakes I'm sure that there's gonna be more so please do not do it just uh, senselessly without any uh, reasoning or thinking or going through do not copy paste the, trans uh, the, the, the text into the Google Translate and back you can do that to spare some typing or whatever but you have to critically analyze the statements are not so easy to render and Google cannot do it unfortunately so that requires professional approach okay that's why I have the Google versions of the sentences and the text please don't send me identical things that's the first thing uh, and some more recommendation uh, if you want to translate like a pro I would recommend you to use the CAT systems and if you start using any of the CAT system right now you will have uh, advantage because uh, I use the same sources for the materials and it means that some terms some structures would re repeat themselves so CAT systems are the ones that offer you to build up some glossaries uh, to add certain uh, portfolios, so to say, or certain exper experience of your translation uh, to your future challenges, right? So these are the CAT systems that I personally know. Uh, Deja Vu a lot of, uh, offers a, lo a lot of packages for uh, machine translation but I personally do not like all of them you can follow by the way the link here um, I can uh, send it once again in uh, comments to this video you can follow this link and you can see some brief characteristics of uh, of this cat tools my favorite is smart cat I frequently use it and uh, you can create your own TM or use somebody's TM uh, these are really beneficial for technical translation so if you get yourself a habit of using CAD systems right now while you are still learning to do the technical translation in your professional work as technical translators that will save you a lot of uh, effort a lot of time and, uh, uh, and help a lot that's from my personal experience but you should also remember that uh, if you're working for a quite advanced company and they are uh, given you some orders for technical translate translation they may uh, even uh, make you force you using CAT systems because for repetitions and for ready for ready made fragments of the text uh, they do not charge uh, you, you cannot charge money yeah? so this is all mechanical and uh, basically they will pay you for every sign that you are making in your translation so please find this link uh, in, uh, in the comments to this video a bit later when we finish and uh, uh, as for inversion if you want to see some more uh, things related to inversion I can also duplicate this uh, slide and uh, share uh, 